Hi, it's Tom here from Running Physio. Uh, today I want to talk to you about some new research that is challenging uh, our shift in views on uh, footwear selection in runners. Now, uh, for a long time, uh, runners were prescribed shoes based solely on foot type. If you had a more pronated foot type, you were pushed towards a motion control shoe, um, perhaps a more neutral foot type, you go in a more neutral shoe. Um, and it's very much based around that. But research has challenged that over the years. And I think we've become a bit more comfortable moving away from that model. However, we've had a couple of studies that seem to be nudging us back towards picking shoes based on foot type. So I thought I'd talk about these, uh, these two studies, what their findings are, um, and whether these motion control shoes do seem to reduce injuries, and in particular, whether they do seem to reduce motion, um, reduce uh, pronation-related injuries, uh, which is what the current research is suggesting they might do. Now, we've also got a link to a brilliant uh, webinar series we put together for you on iliotibial band syndrome. So check that out. The link to that is uh, in the title. And I've included the link to the two key studies we're going to talk about in this video. So let's start by talking about motion control shoes. Now, this uh, most recent study, Willems et al. talks about these shoes and says they're characterized by two features, which I'm going to try and show you on a uh, running shoe that we cut in half uh, for running repairs online for our footwear model there. So the two features they talk about in this paper to characterize these motion control shoes are one, thermoplastic support um, through the medial part of the midfoot, which you can see here on these shoes. And actually you can see um, through the, the bottom as well. And you can see if we uh, show you where we've cut it in half, where there, you know, this thermoplastic structure is designed to provide support through the midfoot. And they also tend to have dual density midsoles, which again, you should be able to see uh, here, this, this dual density midsole, the, the white and blue sections of the running shoe there. So these would be sort of your typical characteristics of a motion control shoe. Now what they're, they're thought to do or meant to do is reduce the amount of pronation during running. And as a result, help to reduce running injury risk from injuries that are thought to be related to pronation. Now, this all sounds good in theory until you come across uh, some of the, the more uh, you know, larger studies in this region. Now, a big study by Nielsen et al. back in about 2013 actually found a pronated foot type was not associated with increased running injury risk. And studies by people like Ryan et al. looked to see whether prescribing shoes based on foot type helped. And actually, they found that they didn't. So these research papers, these historical ones, have kind of moved us away from this model. So it's interesting that newer research is perhaps, as I said, nudging us up a bit more towards it. So let's talk a bit about these uh, studies. Now, essentially, they're, they're a one study population that's been analyzed twice. So the first study was Malasso et al. in 2016. They took 372 runners and randomly allocated them either a motion control shoe or a neutral shoe. Um, and then look to see um, if they went on to develop injuries. Now, what they found in that study is the motion control shoes um, seem to um, reduce injury risk and particularly help those people with a more pronated foot type. So this kind of goes against some of uh, the research we've talked about there. Now, more recently in 2020, Willems et al. reanalyzed the data from this study. So looking at the same 372 runners that were provided either a motion control or a more standard neutral shoe. And what they did with this follow-up study is they wanted to see if these different shoes affected the risk of pronation-related injuries. Now, they uh, define these injuries uh, as ones that would be linked perhaps to, to pronation. So they suggested that would be Achilles tendinopathy, uh, exercise-induced lower leg pain, uh, anterior knee pain, and also plantar fasciopathy. So they reanalyzed this data to see if those people in the motion control shoes were less likely to go on to develop these pronation-related injuries. And actually, they found in their analysis or reanalysis of this data is that motion control shoes did appear to reduce the risk of pronation related running injury. And just to give you some of the stats from that study, 
the hazard ratio, which is what they look at here, um, the hazard ratio to develop a pronation related injury was almost 2.5 times lower with the motion control shoes compared to the neutral shoes. So as you can see on the surface of it, you might think, well, okay, so this newer research maybe is, is pushing us back towards prescribing shoes based on foot type. But I think it's important that we, we recognize with these studies that there are key limitations here and we shouldn't go straight down that, that route based on, on really analysis of one set of data, albeit from quite a large uh, group of runners. The first concern I would have is what is pronation related uh, running injury. Um, you see, you've got to kind of put it in the in the speech marks because there's actually a real lack of high quality prospective data to support the idea that each of these things they've talked about is actually related to pronation and that the other injuries are not. Uh, for example, they've put iliotibial band syndrome in the other injuries, as in not related to pronation, uh, where there may actually be some evidence to suggest that it could possibly play a role in that pathology. So it's difficult to say that these are truly pronation related injuries. We know pronation is a normal movement. It's coupled with ankle dorsiflexion to absorb load during running. Um, so we, we don't want to kind of pathologize that movement. We also don't know how much pronation is excessive. And is it just down to range? Is it also perhaps rate or speed of pronation that's important too? So there's a lot of question marks around this definition of pronation related injury. It also, uh, in these studies, they rely quite heavily on self-reported data from the runners in terms of what the injuries are. And this Willems et al. study in 2020 is a secondary analysis of the data. So it's not really using the data for what it was intended for initially. And there's a risk of bias in them doing that. There's a possibility here that they may have actually defined uh, the running injuries and, and sort of almost gone to look for the evidence to support them. So lots of question marks around this. Um, and I you know, would look at this research. I'd encourage you to read it yourself and make your own conclusions. But I wouldn't rush off to push people uh, towards running shoes based purely on a foot type just because of a couple of new studies that have come out. It does beg the question then, well, what do we do? How do we approach footwear selection in runners? And the more I, I read about running uh, shoes and their influence on running gait and, uh, and factors we might be interested in, the more I realize that the individual response is key and tends to vary from study to study. So I think perhaps we need to move away from general rules like fitting shoes based on foot type and make it about an individual and their specific goals. So. Does a different shoe, for example, help a runner's pain? Can you test it out with them? Uh, this is gonna be easy to do if a runner has predictable pain, as some people do, they know pain kicks in after a, roughly a certain distance or time during a run. Could we get them to try in a slightly different shoe that you might think would reduce the load on sensitive tissues and see if that pain is any less or kicks in any later? So look at individual goals. Is it actually helping their pain? Or if you have a specific movement related goal, perhaps you do think a runner has a large range of pronation during running and you think that may be placing more stress on a structure, maybe tip post, for example. Um, could we try doing the gait analysis in their standard shoe and then see what it looks like in a motion control shoe to see if it does change their, their, their movements that we're interested in here. Although we've got to be a little bit wary there because the shoe will hide the motion of the ankle when we're doing that. Hence why I think probably looking at things like pain is going to be a little bit more useful for our runners in clinic. So interesting research. I think it shows that the, the shoe selection uh, science is, is certainly not clear cut, um, but I think I would interpret it cautiously. And as I said, come back to the individuals and their goals when you're talking about shoe selection. Personally, I think there are a lot of other priorities we'd want to address first. You know, help the runner to understand their injury, look at load management, look at progressive S and C, and then maybe we think about whether shoe selection plays a part for that individual. Okay, thanks very much everyone for, for listening. Um, we're trying to do these, uh, these Facebook Live uh, regularly for you each week. Um, so do you know, put your questions in the, in the comments below. Um, if there's particular topics you'd like us to cover, please do let us know because these videos are for you. And uh, we've put the, uh, the link to the research, as I said, in the title, uh, alongside a link to our uh, iliotibial band uh, webinar series, which I'd really recommend checking out. Okay, thanks very much for listening. Bye for now.